that's going. Hang on over here to this. Let everybody in. Go back over here to this. There's that. All right. Okay, and I should have this where it puts everybody on mute when we start, but I didn't. So let me find it. Mute all. There we go. Got it. All right. Not that I don't want to hear from you because I do. Um, let's see. Speaker view. There we go. Hi. Hi, Bonnie. Let's see. I'm going to put everybody on mute. Oh, you are good. <clears throat> and I don't know why it's doing that. It's got you pinned on my screen. So I'm going to unpin you. Hang on. All right, cool. Um, now it's pinned over here too. I've got two screens going because I'm always wanting to get a backup. Um, let's see. Pin. There we go. All right, cool. You guys, welcome. Thank you for spending your um, Saturday, Saturday morning with me. Um, and just to give you a disclosure, there's only so much we can do in an hour and the chattery mind is um, always busy. So I'm going to give you what I can give you. Those of you who want to take a deeper dive, give me a holler and, you know, we can always do a group where we interactively really dig down and get into this stuff. But before we start, what I wanted to do was kind of take like a, a temperature in the room to just kind of see where everybody is because for you know the way we throw around words like anxiety and panic and you know the test crap and um and the chattery mind that can fall differently on everybody so um why don't you in the chat just give me some ideas first of all on a scale of um when you think about taking a test and you think about the chattery mind, you know, you get in a minute into the test and it's like, there's that part of you that's even afraid to say the words, I think I'm getting this for fear you're going to jinx it. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's a real thing that, and, and it's an honorable thing when you feel that coming on and you're, you're in that moment of, oh my God, I've got it, but I can't say I've got it. And then it hits the chatter starts and the chatter starts looking at what you're writing and criticizing it and telling you there's a brief for that you missed it you missed something else you might as well quit why are you doing this you why did you even start school that thing i want you to just feel that as it's coming up in your body and and in your head and on a scale of one to ten one being um oh i can handle this this is cool and ten being dear god get me out of this feeling get me out of this room <laughs> on a scale of one to ten hang on bren what are you saying over here um oh really it sounds like i'm quiet okay um let me see if i can do anything too i can't i will talk louder um and get closer so Feel that feeling in your body and just give me on a scale of one to 10, um, one being I'm fine. I don't have a problem. This is not an issue for me. And 10 being um, it's holding me back. It's stopping me. It's everything that's not letting me go forward. Um, so give me a, a number scale over there. Uh-huh. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. For me, when I was in school, it was, I didn't even realize the chatter um, but, oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah. Nine to 10 doesn't surprise me at all. I was probably about a seven or eight, but only because it was, it was not higher because my brain wouldn't shut up anytime. So even in a test, it didn't matter. It was the same chatter, <laughs> but for some of you guys, the chatter gets louder in the test. It gets louder in those moments of being triggered by, um, the pressure. I've taken the next down test. Um, I'm going to move that chat. I'm going to move the chatter in the chat over to the side. Um, yeah, the certs are way worse than the school tests because your brain is thinking that they somehow have a different value. It's not that you're doing the same thing because you are doing the same thing, but it doesn't feel like it because this is important. This is really important. There's money and emotions and um, possible embarrassment and humiliation riding on those those tests that you pay money for, the ones that certify you, the ones that change everything, the ones that turn you um, off of the path of being a student and into the path of getting 
um, paychecks. <laughs> I, want you, I want you guys to see that. That that is one of six paychecks I'm getting this month, and um, I, I I think I posted the thing, but it's that was December. That's the slowest month of the year. Um, the money's out there and, and there's part of your brain that may say, I'm scared of that. What if I don't deserve that? What if I haven't worked hard enough? So I've got, I've got some good numbers. Give me some words. If there were words that you would share with those of us who understand what you're feeling when you're, um, hitting that moment of chatter, um, what, what might it be in four letter words are okay. Cause I used, <laughs> I used them in my head to shut up the chatter all the time. <laughs> Ah, I love this. Ah, yeah. It's like, um, it occurred to me one day when someone was saying, you know, I don't know the magic words to tell the voice in my head to shut up when I'm in a test. And I'm like, okay, if you're doing Q and A and you're doing two voices and then the chatter starts, now you've got three voices. The last thing you want to do is use words to tell the voice to shut up because now you have four voices and you know how you can't write when you're trying to, when you're speaking. Um, when the attorneys ask me, you know, when can we have that transcript, Ms. Reporter? And I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, now I got to think and write and what I'm saying at the same time. And it, it, there's a horrible disconnect going in there. Um, and Sappy's saying, relax. Yeah, relax, let go. Just sometimes if you can have um, ahead of time a, a procedure that you go through, um, telling yourself, I'm not going to say a word. I'm going to breathe deeply or I'm going to plant my, curl my toes into the ground. I'm going, I'm going to do something that's not verbal to tell that, to trigger that voice, to tell it, relax, let go, go away, push up. There are people who visualize that thing as pink puffy clouds floating up above them and gone. Um, and I remember the day when I realized that the chatter was happening, but I didn't know what it was saying because all I could, I could like see the words going up there. It was like seeing a piece of paper, but I wasn't attaching to it, which really helped. So those are great. I'm going to let some more people in the room here. Those are, those are great words and they're exactly where we want to be. So I, I've just done like five bullet points. I'm going to go through um, kind of my procedure of trying to, and this sounds very generic and it kind of sounds a little amorphous. Um, and yeah, I love using those words because we love words. Um, and I was going to say, Doug is on this call with us too. I'll bring him on in a bit, but for right now, I'm going to go through my, it's, it's basically five bullet points and what does everything start with? And that's the breath. And I hated it just as much as you guys do. And when I'm behind, when I'm, you know, rushing and, and I've gone through a, a some of you guys have seen me talk about it, the arbitration from hell this week where I had people stomping over each other and the internet glitching out and the audio not working. And those moments when I saw myself suck in big breath and I just held it while I was hanging on for dear life. And of course, that's what we don't want to do, but that's inherently naturally what we do because we're feeling under pressure. And when we do, our neurology from a billion years ago tells us take a deep breath and run like hell because there's a monster after you. Only the monster is the perfect transcript that we want to get from the attorneys who don't know what the hell they're doing, who should go back to law school, half of them. And you're in the middle of it trying to create this perfect thing with imperfect parts. And it's not our fault, but we take it all on. So breathe in every instant that you can and practice it when you're not behind your machine practice am I breathing I'm just acknowledged am I taking deep breaths to remind my brain that I'm safe because when you're doing deep full loading breaths of oxygen your brain is going to be tricked into thinking that you're safe and that's where we want to be is safe behind that machine safe in writing in every environment so you're safe in a test also so number one the chatter that's happening in your head or the feeling that's happening in your body. And sometimes it's a feeling, sometimes it's words. Sometimes we get the double whammy and it's both, but to acknowledge what's happening. And you're going to have to practice this when you're practicing, not when you're taking a test. I love it when somebody gets some, some thing out of our group and says, Oh, that's a great idea. I'm going to use that the next time I take a test. 
okay, good luck, because you don't know what it is, and you haven't felt it, and you haven't practiced it, and you haven't practiced it to the point where it comes automatically. So now you've added another element in the test on top of the test. So whatever I'm giving you here, practice it in your practice so that you're downloading that into your subconscious also, so that it becomes automatic. Um, it becomes like putting your sh boots on before you go outside if it's raining. It becomes automatic, like the things you do in the car that you check before you take off. Um, and you do a lot of those things even unconsciously, not knowing that you're, you know, you're checking your mirror and you're looking around and it's everybody got seatbelts on, whatever. It's the things that just become automatic. And we want everything good about how we write to become automatic. So that's what we do. And there are very few moments of panic of, of what do I, what do I do or I'm behind or, this is a new situation. How do I deal with it? And so um, in every instant, we want you to have tools to fall back on. So by acknowledging it, we at least are seeing the elephant in the room. Then I want you to accept, this is the hard part. It was for me. It's like, I don't want to accept that it's there. I want it to go away. And I had a very um, well-meaning therapist who was working with me with anxiety and kept telling me, you have to accept it. And I thought, no, I fucking don't. I want it to be gone. <laughs> I mean, she says, what do you want from, what do you want? And I said, I want this feeling in my body to be gone. And she said, well, you're going to have to bring it in and accept it. And, and I thought, I just couldn't, I could, why would I, I wouldn't bring in somebody off the street who was being mean to me and offer them tea. Why would I accept this? this uncomfortable feeling to come in. But with us working with our neurology, the thing they don't teach you is that the feelings, the feeling you feel it with the anxiety, the chatter in your head, all of that is going to keep coming up to be seen, to be acknowledged, ugh, to be validated. Um, and I'm like, okay, so this is a different game. I can play a game with it if I don't have to actually invite it in for coffee and tea and, and cookies. But if what I need to do is see it and acknowledge it, is that really all it wants? Because what I've been doing is telling it to get the F away from me and I'm pushing it down and I'm stuffing it and I'm ignoring it and I'm running away from it and I'm not wanting it to be there as if I've got a bridge to cross and there are several steps up to the bridge, but I don't like steps. So I don't want to go there. And I don't want the steps to be there. And why can't they just not be there? And I'm just not accepting the reality that's there in front of me that I don't like it. It's going to be uncomfortable, but this is what I have to do. And that's school in a nutshell, period. It's, this is uncomfortable. I don't like it, but this is what I have to do to get on the bridge, to get to the other side of the river. And that's Oh yeah, that's why I've wanted to become a court reporter, to be over there doing that thing, not sitting in school for my, the rest of my life. And uh, the difference you see between people getting out fast and not getting out fast is the fact that they realize that this is just um, a means to an end. It's not you're, that you're really stuck in purgatory or hell and you don't know how to get out. You don't know the prayers to say or the things to do that are going to grant you out of this place that you're stuck in. Um, and it just, it just feels like that. Um, yeah, Linda, exactly. People get too used to feeling like they're being a student because, um, because you want to feel comfortable where you are. Um, and, and, and that is a way of writing better, faster is being relaxed and comfortable, but we get, it's a different mindset. Just, I'm a student. I'm always going to be a student. Well, then how are you going to go into the next version of you if that's if that's the limited box that you've put yourself in so acknowledge it accept it and then see it for what it is and that's i that's where i think you know understanding is power because the conscious mind is the part that's chattering um hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to, Doug, I'm going to ask you to kind of look at the stuff in the chat so we can bring some of this stuff up later and really address it. Um, so I don't miss anybody's important questions because those are good things. We want to see it for what it is because the conscious mind, um, it, it's, ab 
it's absolutely in a fearful mode all the time. And so every bit of the chatter you hear is not, oh, look at you, look at, look at your, you know, those shoes look great with that outfit. You know, people are gonna just see you today and you're gonna shine. That's not what your chattery mind is doing. It's like, why did you pick those shoes? Those don't go with anything. You know, you got cankles, not ankles, baby. Why are you walking out the door like that? And I'm like, I'm in the middle of a test. <laughs> Why are you doing this to me right now? Have you, have you got nothing better to chatter at me about? But it's that part that's running out of fear. And it's also, this is weird, that chattery thing, think of it in any way you want to think of it. Think of it as a part of your personality. Think of it as a blob. Think of it as just a thing, um, an animal, um, a thought. But it's needing to feel vitally necessary. And so the thoughts it comes up with are, I'm a problem solver. I can analyze things and give you solutions to problems. Oh, you don't have a problem? Wait, don't worry. I can go get one. I'll bring it back and then you'll have a problem, but don't worry because I'll solve it for you. And it's doing that to us constantly when we think, what the hell's wrong with me? I'm practicing, I'm taking, I should be doing better on the tests. And you know, why did I do this? Why did I stop? Why did I drop? Why did I hesitate? Um, because there are other things that are getting in the way. You're not, you're not truly in a place of being just on what I call autopilot or in the zone, which is if you think of, I always think of my brain this way. It's like from here up is my conscious chattery mind. And from here down in my body is my steno dictionary that I've been practicing and loading in there for, take a deep breath, kids, those of you who are in theory, for years. And I'm still doing it every day when I'm like writing and the moment I start thinking about how I'm writing, the moment I start, I'm realizing I'm up in my head analyzing, um, I'm writing slower because this part of your brain, that chattery part is, um, <laughs> we'll get to how do you stop it, don't worry, honest. Um, the chattery part can process 126 bits of information per second, which is pretty fast. We could never write as fast as that thing thinks. But the part below your conscious mind that's in your body, your subconscious can process 2 million bits of information per second. And so that's the part when you're in the zone and you're kind of paying attention, but not, you're not really paying attention, but you're on top of the words, you get to the end of the test and you, or you're transcribing the test and you don't even remember these words coming up, but they're perfect. The, your notes are perfect and everything's there because this part of you wasn't analyzing what you're writing as you're going along. So um, aside from, from seeing it, we need to know its purpose and its purpose up here is to keep us alive on the planet for one more day. It doesn't care that you're taking a test. It doesn't care that you're happy or you're not happy. It really only is, it's very narcissistic. It wants it to be safe. It wants it to be important. It wants it to be alive tomorrow. And it doesn't care how it has to do that. It will keep you back from taking risks. It will keep you from trying things that are unknown. It will keep you away from anything that feels questionable. And it will definitely try to keep you away from anything that doesn't feel comfortable. And so when it feels you going into a test, that's the anxiety coming up in your body to tell you you're going into something that could turn out bad. Maybe you don't want to do this. And on a conscious level, you're thinking, well, that's ridiculous. I have to take this test to get out of school. Isn't that what we want to do? But all parts of you aren't getting that message. So the last thing we can do is to after we've gone through all of these different stages and, um, and that's what I can do with a, with a small group of you guys in an hour is really work through those things, but to become the director of your conscious mind, to understand who it is, what it is, why it's doing what it's doing, and then to take control back from it because this part of you is not you, <laughs> the chattery analytical part of you, and I thought, it, it's got to be me. I mean, it's a voice in my head that won't shut up. It's in my head. It's got to be me. And the way somebody explained it to me was when you come onto the planet, when you're born, you don't have that chatter in your head. You're not wondering, oh, is my diaper look okay? Does it match with my booties that my mom put on for me? 
No, it doesn't care. It's you being you in a state of just frankly, bliss. It's taking care of the body. Am I getting fed? Am I getting some sleep? Am I getting held? Am I, are my needs being met? And it only goes kind of in and out of delta waves, just sleeping, sleeping and waking, sleeping and waking. And then from about six months to two years, you're in theta waves. And so you're kind of a little bit more conscious of things that are going on. Your brain is evolving and developing different brain wave levels. And so now you're in theta waves, delta waves, theta waves, delta waves. Theta, by the way, is deep, deep hypnosis. And I love it because Paul McCartney says theta waves is where the magic music lives. <laughs> it's the stuff where you tap into it, but you can't grab it and bring it with you back into the conscious waking world. Um, sometimes you can't and you get amazing songs that touch humanity through every cell of everyone's body because we are all connected and that's where that stuff is coming from. But from the age of two to seven, your brain evolves into alpha waves. And I thought, wait a minute, alpha waves is hypnosis. That was what I was taught. Well, yeah, from the age of two to seven, your brain has access not to problem solving, not to analytical chatter. It just has alpha waves, theta waves, delta waves. And so it cycles in and out of those daily. And it's also downloading in, in that moment of alpha waves, it's downloading everything it hears, feels, touches, is exposed to. It's becoming the program that that body will live on for the rest of its life or until it sees the program and decides, I don't like that program. I don't, I don't like feeling like I've got chatter going on all the time. I want that to stop. If that's a program that's running, then let's figure out how to change the program because I don't like this music. I don't like this station. I want a different station. <laughs> and basically it is a vibrational kind of thing. So figuring out ways to direct your mind to stop doing what it's doing. I'm going to give you a couple of concrete things. Um, we can touch on them um, again later better, but um, one of the things you can do is literally have a conversation with the chatter that's in your mind and tell it, look, I get it. You're not me. You're trying to help me. You're a part of me that I really need. So I'm not going to get rid of you. Okay. No matter how bad you do your job, you're not going to get fired. I actually need you, but I don't need you when I'm taking a test. I'm in a test and you're processing. I don't want to hurt your feelings, but it's slow. Okay. And what I really need, what we re really need is to get out of the way of the part of my body that knows how to pass the tests. It can hear the words, process them through my body and out my fingers or out my mouth, depending on your method. But it can do that if conscious mind, you and I get out of the way. Present the body to the machine and say, baby, write however you want to write, because at 2 million bits of information per second, you're going to not just be on top of the word that you're hearing, you're going to be able to shut everything else out. And hear the words that came before, see the words you're trying to attack and actually anticipate what's coming next because it can hear faster than you can. And it knows how to put those things together faster than lightning if we stay out of its way. And the minute, this, the instant that you hear anything that sounds like, there's a brief for that. <laughs> You're right back up in your slow processing part and take a deep and say it, that happens, but we want to practice being out of it. Take a deep breath and just visualize yourself, bringing yourself back down into your body and tell that part of you that chatters. I love you. You're trying to help, but you're not. And so you can't go in the test with me. Sorry. You have to be outside the room so the proctor can't see you, feel you, anticipate you. But you have supersonic hearing, so I know you're going to be able to hear everything that's happening in the test, but I don't hear you. But don't leave, because where I do need you is when I'm transcribing, because that's when I have the time and the luxury to listen to your chatter and to listen to you say, that's not where that comma goes. I know punctuation rules and that doesn't work. So have a conversation, take control back over that thing. Doug, I saw you pop up. Did you want to say something or you just want me to look at how pretty you are today? Okay. And you are, <laughs> you're looking marvelous. Okay. I'm going to go through a process with you guys real quick. Um, just kind of a guided meditation and we're not going to dig deep. This is going to be basically just kind of 
taking what I've just given you and putting it into a, um, a method of injecting it into your subconscious so that it just feels natural and comfortable and like a place we want to go. Um, my notes here, make sure I'm not missing anything really quick, but I think we got it. So if you guys are all ready, what we'll do is we'll go through this process. And then as we come back out, we'll kind of share with each other, um, kind of where, where we are and, um, and the, and the questions that you guys still have that Doug is keeping an eye on for me. Can, can I mention Carrie, one thing while you're sure. getting ready for the process? Yeah. It's not, it's not uncommon for people to say what's wrong with me. Um, the so that's really what Kathy said, and I think that's not not uncommon at all. It comes in in a lot of different iterations, and one of those is why am I doing this? Yeah, Ooh. Uh, it, right. So yeah. so all of that stuff is um, is real. And the funniest thing was I was sitting here thinking, man, if I was a reporter, I would I would be typing along with you because you were really running at a good clip. I was right. <laughs> I was. And it's like, what? That'd be great practice. Because those are, I mean, you should put these really strange words that I really haven't heard together together. And it's like, yeah, that's a whole vocabulary. You know, yeah. my mind wants to keep me safe. My mind processes things differently based on whether I'm thinking. How do I, how do I interrupt that, that thinking? So if I sat down at my, at my keyboard and I took, uh, I closed my eyes. It's an interrupter. Mm -hmm. Take a big deep breath. You might even take two. And then you might notice how relaxed you get with like two breaths after you close your eyes because Carrie's going to put you in a process and she's going to give you an opportunity to do that. You're going to go, wait, if I can do that by just closing my eyes, then what else can I use as an interrupter? Mm -hmm. And it's really about you practicing it becoming familiar the oil is a good thing <laughs> it's say, really a good thing yeah I interrupter say, I'm, I'm gonna yeah because I, I yeah and i was gonna say i've, I've been I'll get, i've been in one mode because i'm talking to you a billion miles an hour and actually i'm going to use that oil to just kind of as an interrupter go ahead doug because we're going to go to a different speed in a second all, all of that is you have all this information and that's exactly what you guys do you listen to this information you see it um and uh, it looks like to me that what what you're really doing it feels like to me it seems like to me it's it, it you're right you get all this information and to be really transparent you don't really need your eyes do you mm -hmm. i mean you know and when you close your eyes you turn off about 70 75 percent of the input mm -hmm. my eyes are always looking around measuring things right mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, good, good, good point, Bonnie. You want to identify the speakers, sort of, um, right? They should be not. They should be kind enough to introduce themselves, right, and tell you who they are. I'm joking. <laughs> no. um, so the important thing is, is that you get the limited thing, so you identify the speaker. That's great. If you, if you were, were to close your eyes again, you would eliminate about seventy percent of the jabber, and it, if you um, notice that my eyes are moving around it's re my eyes are recording all the time mm. and so when i stop the recorders and i take a breath then i really am giving myself some space it's a weird thing it's what we do with meditation right yeah I so what i wanted to do carrie is just kind of give you the contrast you 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 were doing a wonderful job explaining a lot of wonderful cool. things i'm sitting here thinking they're going to record all those things this would be a great practice and huh now that they've got it how do they how do they well you may not be able to stop it right now because it's practice but how do they slow it down right yeah yeah i'm focusing your eyes so it doesn't record like you're like it's mm -hmm. like looking at a, a, a 3d puzzle right yeah something that i'm i've noticed a lot of reporters we talked about this last time with the lava lamp and I realized I've got a tapestry up above me. And so I'm, I'm like, literally, as I, I'll sit there and let myself look up, <laughs> which puts my brain into alpha waves just by looking up, keep head level, look up, but it's, it's actually directing your conscious mind. It's giving it a job. It's like, I want you to go do this for a while. And while it's got a job, it won't chatter. 
because it's are you calling your unconscious mind a puppy <laughs> kind of <laughs> give it a treat tell it this is what i want you to well in the olden days back in the back in the 30s 40s and 50s when we all went to school um, they would tell us at the beginning of each, you know, when, before it was ready begin, it was find a spot on the floor and focus. And I thought, find a spot on the floor? Like, you know, well, there's a dirty spot. <laughs> there's an analytical mind going at it. But what it was doing was telling that part of your brain, and you can do it with a dot on your computer, on your machine, on anything, Look at that dot, make sure that spot doesn't move. Your job for the next five minutes is to absolutely just stare at that dot and everything else doesn't matter. It just fades away so that the, the words just come through your ears and process because your visual now is taken up. Your conscious mind has got a job to do. That's uh, if you can remember it, I mean, that is, and practice it beforehand, that really does it's magic, except for the California people who are doing four people talking at once. And you have to do a different process of diffusing your vision so that you're kind of focused in a different way, defocused and focused at the same time. So we can work on that separately. But anything else, Doug, before I. I'm going to remember the blue dot that Kathy <laughs> just mentioned. Yeah. yeah, it's it. It works. Um, yeah, having no sight. And I've actually had attorneys when I was doing in-person jo in jobs, <clears throat> I've had attorneys, uh, I'm like sitting like this, you know, writing like a maniac. And he said, are you okay? And I thought, yeah, yeah, I was, I, I mean, I wasn't okay because you were talking so freaking fast, but then I shut my eyes and I tilted my head down and I zoomed into my machine and now I'm fine, except you interrupted, <laughs> you interrupted me. Um, but I've, t I've told them, no, 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 I shut my eyes down to shut everything else out. Um, and your hearing picks kind of picks up and makes up for part of that too. Um, there's a weird, I don't know if I've ever shared this with you, Doug, but real quick, this was amazing when I realized it, that conversational tone, um, what we hear in tests in conversation is like the mid range of our hearing. But when we feel the least bit stressed, which is why it's really important to go through the breathing and some meditation and just, you know, coming back down to anchor before a test and to be practiced at doing that. Because anytime you feel any kind of tension and anxiety and nervousness in your body, this mid range changes and it shrinks down because what your neurology is saying is something's wrong we have to look for the dangers and the dangers are high pitched screams and low rumbly sounds. And this crap in the middle, these words, they don't matter. We have to shut them down. That's safe. They're just people talking, but something else is wrong. And so what we really want to do is practice relaxing and telling your body you're safe. Everything is fine. There is no threat that's going to happen in the next five minutes and open up that channel of hearing. Because I thought, oh my God, I'm losing the words in the very moment when I need the words the most. Kind of blew my mind. It's this is interesting because you know, you, you, Carrie, you're very good at making a connection. Now, it looks like now. Give me some feedback. Just do, am I looking at you? I can't tell. <laughs> I would imagine because I'm the only thing on the screen. But why? Yeah. So, so if I am looking at you, notice I'm using the word you, mm -hmm. I'm looking at you. Will you, will you type in a 10? If I'm not looking at you, will you type in a one? Ooh. What do you get? I'm talking that? to the whole group. Oh, anybody oh. that thinks I'm looking at them. So well, oh. yeah, one. So, so I'm not really looking at anybody. In actual fact, I'm looking at, the camera. Now oh, in TV okay. land, they tell you not to look at the camera. So watch this. Am I looking at you now? Mm -hmm. Okay. No. So you can instantly see how powerful our eyes are. They, they get the conversation that now if I move my camera over just a little bit and I move my screen up just a little bit, does it look like I'm looking more at you now? Mm hmm. Yeah. So, 
So when we do hypnosis with hypnosis students, we have to tell them to be present, right? Right. So I, the reason I'm, I'm the, thank you for responding. The funny part is, is I was listening to this conversation and, and um, who was it? Linda was talking about that. She was kind of gently swaying as she was, as she was recording. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of people that um, might be singing a song and as they sway with the that's, emotions, right? That's Stevie Wonder. They're, yeah. They're, yeah. They're really into it. Well, Stevie didn't have any, this is a good conversation. Yes. <laughs> so he was into it and he didn't really could never see what he looked like. So I think that's the point is you use your eyes now to be able to see so much and understand so much. And there's so much happening that as soon as you, shut your eyes you actually do have an interruption so i'm gonna i'm just really wow. over rationing on that mm -hmm. so if you close your eyes and turn your head down and get kind of get in the mood you are really you are really getting in that zone and um when you when you practice you can close your eyes there's nobody watching who cares right well and even the when you can in in the tests even with two voice because you're you are going to be able to hear the difference between two voices but to close your eyes down, I mean, you, and just for a second, um, you can you can imagine. I mean, am I in a am I in a practice situation or I'm in a, am I in a test situation? I don't know. I'm just writing. I'm doing I'm what writing. I do best. Oh, I like that, and I do. I often do it better than I than I intend to. Yeah. Just yeah. Kind of, all you're doing is you're continuing to. Put, put layers on that. This is what I do. And I do this well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I like that. Okay. High performance. You guys are all high performance people. Oh, you don't, you don't even know, you don't even know that yet, but you know, when you, when you pass all your certifications, you get your certs and the reality is you're going to be high performance, peak performance people. Yeah. And, yeah. and it trans, it transports to everything else in your life. If you want it to. It does. It does. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. letting me. No, no, thank you. I appreciate okay. it. So now that I'm hyped up on my, on my anchor over here, um, I'm going to ask you guys, you can turn off your, um, videos if you want, doesn't matter. Um, I'm just going to be here doing, doing what I do. I'm going to lean in a little bit, um, because I know some of you are having trouble hearing and I don't, I don't know why that is, but I'm just going to ask you to close your eyes down and take that big, deep breath. You can never take too many of them. And as you let the air out of your lungs, just let everything that wants to go with it go. Just let it go. And another deep breath in. As you had closed your eyes down, there was a feeling of relaxation, a feeling of letting go that was not just in your eyes, but it can now translate into every cell in your body and just see everything about you, around you, within you, just letting go and relaxing. And I want you to do a really quick mental check from the top of your head, just kind of drifting down through your body to notice, not to do anything with it, but notice if there's any area of tension, any place of, I'll call it density, or any place that draws your attention to it, and just be aware of that. And just scan your body all the way down. And as you're letting your imagination and your focus go from the top of your head down all the way to the bottoms of your feet, just allow yourself to imagine any density, any holdback, any tension, just being released and allowed to drift through your body and gravity, pulling it down out all the way down, perhaps out the bottom of your feet into the earth and just let it go. And the earth will take it on happily. The earth will transmute everything into something so much more wonderful. Let the tension go. You don't need to hang on to it any longer. Take another deep breath in. Feel yourself being circled in an element of trust, an armor of protection, a place of safety. Because inside you, within you, going inside you, when you close your eyes and you tilt your head down and you tip into a part of you that's just tapping into the knowing, that part of you knows there is nothing to be afraid of and that you are safe always. 
dropping from a place of thinking into a place of being, you are even safer. So for a moment, allow yourself to imagine and to go to what the feeling is that you want in every moment. And here we know that understanding is power and that allowing is healing. That what we resist persists. And to allow the parts of us that hold us back to be released, we must see them and accept them and not resist them lest they persist in our lives and hold us back. So what is it that you want? A clear, peaceful mind, a happy heart, that calm, peaceful knowing, that being within you in the zone. See what you want and breathe that in. As your breath comes in, you're breathing the vision of what you want in. And as you exhale, everything that is not that releases and goes. Acknowledge what is. And without resistance, invite it. Invite it in to become more with the power that you already are. Know that everything which seems like a hold back now can actually be propelling and be an energy of pushing you forward into where you want to be. And now you realize that there are parts of you which seem to be working against you that actually want what you want. Getting all parts of you on the same page for a common goal will take you toward it. So feeling that feeling that you want, see yourself. Imagine yourself sitting there in a chair, even the chair you're in now, and there you are anchored to you, anchored to the core of you, anchored to the ground, anchored to the earth. Feel the power from above as it comes down through you, lighting you up with energy and with knowing. This is the power and the energy surging through you at all times, even in your unawareness. Just feel it now. It's just you being you. It seems so simple, but this is where the power is. This is where the speed is. This is where the focus is. This is where it all shifts for you. This is where you step into being, being so much more than you had ever imagined. Being becomes you, being you in all of your power. Know that when you find a feeling you like, that you can hold it within you for as long as you want, feel that feeling and breathe it in. Know that when you have a feeling that you don't want, you have the power to press a pause button within you at any time and take that moment to reconstruct how you want to feel, how you want to approach it. And in an instant, that power, the knowledge, the way forward is yours. Allowing is healing. Sometimes doing nothing is doing everything. You inherently know this. It's what you were way back in the beginning and it's what you will return to and you are returning to in every breath you take now with every beat of your heart. In knowing you have the power, you at all times have the power. It is just that fearful chattery mind that distracts us from our path. And now that you know, you have the tools in every instant and with practice to make them come instantaneously without effort, automatically in that new, beautiful, brilliant program that runs 
just the way you want it, knowing that you can all make it happen automatically. And there it is. And that pause button also gives you eternal moments of time to reflect because time is relative and the speed of time is yours. The speed of writing, the speed of focus, the speed of letting go, the speed of healing and achieving is all yours. In those moments, in those eternities of a nanosecond, you can reframe, you can redirect, and without any effort, you can get the problem on board to become the solution that will give you the results that will astound you and even those around you. And you see it now as in every day you commit to who you are and where you are going. And you notice that the people around you may see the changes in you even before you do. It becomes automatically not what you're doing. It becomes who you are. This is the key to keep going. And know that in this peaceful state, this is you. And you can come back to this whenever you want. Because what didn't make sense does now in a way that no one could have imagined. But there it always is. There it always was. And you are always there. You are the one force in your life that will never fail you. You are the one who will catch you when you fall because you are going ahead of who you are now and becoming more in every precious moment. You are the one force in your life that will always be there, connected to all that is, to everything that ever was or will be. And just the knowing of this sets you free. So feel it and breathe that in and come back to who you were always meant to be with peace and with knowing. And I want you to now, as I count you back, feel the air in the room around you and become aware of your body in a new amazing way as your partner, as that part of you that was here before you were born as that part of you that will carry through your entire life and be there even after you are gone. To thank it for its power and its knowing and its persistent being, its persistently learning and being and helping you become all that you can be. The stabilizing force, the knowing force in your life on the count of one and two Allow yourself to feel yourself in this new version of you on the count of two and three, knowing that all neurologic messages from me to you, from you to your own unconscious part of knowing, those changes are happening instantaneously without any effort from you going deeper into you, becoming who you are in every moment. On the count of four and five, you are coming back to a new you, a version that was recreated and is recreated in every instant, in every moment of awareness. This is your life and this is you in every bit of it, standing in your own power and knowing and full of love. Take a deep breath in and when you're ready, only when you're ready, Come back to the room. Come back to all of us who face the same challenges every day, who feel the same fears and go through them anyway. Those of us who are braver and stronger than we ever knew we were. I'm going to switch my view back to gallery. I'll let you guys come back on. Ooh, where gallery, gallery go. Sweet. And I'm just going to take a, have a deep breath again. I want to take a, a temperature in the room. 
on a scale of one to 10, one being nervous and 10 being, you know, I'm okay. And everything in the world is okay. Where are you on that scale of one to 10? <laughs> Seven maybe is cool. I got a 12 in there. Good. Sweet. All right. Beautiful. And if there was, yeah, I saw some, some words going through there. If you, if there's something that comes to you that you want to share with us, go ahead. Um, I love the words. Sometimes the simple words are the most powerful ones. While you guys are relaxing and coming back to this new and improved rebooted version of you going forward. Um, I'm going to turn this over to Doug for a second because he's going to share with us something um, about getting a recording from me. For those of you who haven't already, go ahead, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out. So you, you all like to hang out with Carrie. I think that's awesome. And so I'm, I'm just going to post this. What, what we've been trying to do is catch up to um, being present, being like right here. So, so here's the here's the uh, here's the link. What we've been what, we've been, what we have been doing with um, these these uh, little forms of Google is just kind of capturing the people who want to hang out with Carrie. I suspect in the short term, that's really the 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 result um, that we're looking for. Who wants to hang out? In the longer term, is we I suspect you're going to create a, um, a second group that will be a little more. Um, yeah, don't we all? I want to be like Carrie. Um, <laughs> Brent was right. It's, we're going to probably create a second group that will. We, we need some additional guinea pigs for. They'll be a little more focused on on uh, actually eliminating some blocks and and allowing you to increase your performance. Yeah, I want to be like Bryn. <laughs> so uh, the, the point is, is that if, if you get that Google Doc, all, all this is for is for a recording. Mm -hmm. It's the freebie that we're going to start promoting with Carrie um, because this recording is really useful. So can I explain the recording? Oh, a little yeah. Bit, Carrie? Yeah, please. So this is a little longer recording. You don't have to listen to the whole thing. It's really, um, it's, it's not going to, get you into a deep state. However, it's her lovely voice and the words are designed for, well, I'll, just, I'll explain the theory. Okay. Cool. So the theory is, um, there are some, uh, some therapists that want to work on the root cause. And that's like when it happened, when you're two, three, four or whatever. Right. And then there's some therapists that want to work on the most recent experience. So you felt a little bit anxious when you sat down today before you started to re report practice. So talk about that. What were you feeling? So there's these two extremes and it seems like they're just really distant. However, in your mind, there is a neural pathway that goes from here all the way up to here. And both therapists are trying to simply say, let's change your neural pathway. Let's change the road that you, that you use the well-worn road. You can imagine maybe, um, a, a skiing trail down some snow where you see those tracks, there's a well-worn path. And so I know that the path started here and it's still running. It's like a program, a little computer program. And then there's another school of thought that says, well, there's something kind of in the middle somewhere before you were seven ish that allowed you to um, create, adapt, adjust what you thought about things. Mm -hmm. And if you get the conversation, when you're six, seven, eight, you didn't have all of the capabilities, all the skills, all the intelligence, all the experience that you have. And so you may have made some incorrect choices. Mm -hmm. So to give you a, a really good example, you might not think today is a, a wonderful day. And it's just because of your experience. It's because a neural pathway has been used over and over and over and over. So this recording is really saying here, here are a bunch of statements. Here are a bunch of thoughts 
that you might want to change, adapt, adjust to make them yours. Hmm. And those statements and thoughts really are around getting you just relaxed enough so that the thing that tells you you should consider it or you shouldn't consider it just kind of slows down a little bit. It's called the critical factor. So for instance, if, I, if, if, you, if you all came up and I all told you, oh, you're all so beautiful, about about 75 percent statistically would say no that's crazy you're you're wacko and your critical factor would just bat that away wouldn't even let that in and it's so practiced you wouldn't even notice mm -hmm. so all we're doing is moving you into more theta state like you were before seven ish and <laughs> linda says ah that's me um and the reality is we you know you already know that we are all beautiful right no it's like okay so let's argue for a second what if i said mm, you're beautiful enough no so what if i wasn't talking about your face what if i was talking about your heart and the way you respond to people mm -hmm. is that is it if i expand the word beautiful mm -hmm. yeah get it so your mind has already made some of these choices. So what this recording does with Gary's, Gary's made is it literally has you relax. It has you turn on a recorder in your mind and the recorder allows you to remember and adapt and change these phrases that she's recorded so that they are literally you, they become yours in a way that is useful for you. So nobody wants to talk you into the fact that you're beautiful comma, however you are, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, hold on to that for a second. Hold mm -hmm. on to it, close your eyes. Am I beautiful? Yeah, you are. And in so many different ways, in so many amazing ways. But your critical factor, we're gonna get that out of the way and then you can listen to these phrases and it might not be exactly right. But I can tell you that while I was listening to the carriage recording, um, I was flying on an airplane from Vancouver to Salt Lake because I live in Salt Lake or near Salt Lake. And I just done some training and I was really apprehensive about the training. You know, I was really worried about going there and whatever. It's all going to, it's not going to work out. I, I'm, my mind is jabbering different ways. I have to have 48 different ways to do something just in case one of them doesn't work. Right. Contingency plan X, X, Y is what I've ended up. So I uh, sitting on the plane. And I had this statement that's in the recording pop into my mind. And the statement is, you, you do good, you do good work. And, and often it's better than you expect. Mm -hmm. And that phrase popped in my mind. And I thought, I have never been told that. I have never experienced that. Mm -hmm. I have never lived that. I have never, 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 never. Where did I get that thought? And then I realized it was on the recording because we've been working on the script. I went, mm -hmm. whoa, that snuck in. It's, I yeah. do good work. And it often turns out better than I expect. Yeah. So who would who would pay like 100 bucks for that, right? Wow. Well, yeah, I would. So the bottom line is the, the form is for the recording. And the recording's a little long. It's about 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. You're being guinea pigs. Um, it's, a, it's a demo. It's got some really relaxing music behind it. And mm -hmm. it's not really heavy. But the important thing is that that whole conversation about you being or doing whatever you want to, there is a firm foundation of information that you that you have that everything rests on top of. Yeah. Your performance as a core reporter rests on this this thing, how you feel about you, yeah. how you love yourself, how yeah. you allow others to love you, yeah. how you love others, right? how you're open, how you collaborate. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys would give the shirt off your back to most of your, most of your student friends or your colleagues. Yeah. Well, Carrie's doing that right now, right? She's yeah. like trying to encourage you and help you understand that she has gone through the journey and she's here mm -hmm. and you can do it. You can do it for you mm -hmm. or your family or your, you know, whatever situation you're in. So this recording is for that. And that's the short version of an hour conversation we can have theory theory wise if you want, but did yeah. that help carry? Yeah, it did. I, I was watching some posts that were going by. Um, yeah, you could listen to this anytime you could listen to once you've listened to it. I don't know, actively, 
you could actually put it on in the background just and it becomes a subliminal message too like brim was saying you could listen to it while you're practicing something else you could you could because yeah. it's going to yeah. give you know different parts of your brain something else to do what i noticed when i listened to it back the first time because i'm thinking oh i don't want to listen to my voice <laughs> it's me i know where i'm going but i don't because it's such a long script i didn't know where the hell i was going i don't remember saying that and obviously i did it's my voice on the recording but it's, um, as I was listening to it, I thought, wow, these are really great messages. These are really great thoughts. And if I keep hearing it, you know, your brain learns by repetition. So it's going to start coming on board with that stuff automatically. But then it occurred to me, oh, wait a minute. I, sh I was listening to it at night and it was talking about the day and today and moving forward from a moment of start into the day and i thought well i should be listening to this in the morning <laughs> i mean even if i was just half awake it would be a perfect thing to just hit play as i was kind of slowly getting into setting my intentions and waking up and moving into the day so anyway that was my take i i was surprised <laughs> that's a good take can i mention one more thing sure if we really want to go into the theory, the theory behind this, sorry, my dog wants to come in. The theory behind this is, is simply <laughs> that you exp expose yourself to it, but there is a process. If you really, really want to play, you listen to this recording for seven days mm -hmm. and then you listen to it once a week for seven weeks. Mm -hmm. Now you'll notice that the sneaky number is there is seven. It's easy to remember seven and seven and and the fun part is, is that you don't have to listen to this always. You just have to refresh your memory of it. Mm -hmm. And your mind is processing. You have a supercomputer in there and it's processing it. When you've got it and you've got it recorded, then you just, all you're doing is refreshing it. It's less practice than you will do with your reporting. However, it still is practice. It's good practice. So wow. thanks for letting me share. That's Ooh. what the, should I post it again? Yeah, sure. Just in case. Just because. Okay. And you're, you're welcome to share it with um, other court reporting student friends that oh, yeah. just say, I don't know, <laughs> give it a try. Uh, I don't know. Give it a try. If it works, do it again. <laughs> now, I, I can also mention that, that um, Carrie is working on another recording because we are. And so, um, oh, that was nice. Bye, Cindy. Bye, Cindy. The important thing is, is that it also says, do you want to be on our list? And we'll let you know about new releases. Yeah. So. So please do share the doc if you want to. You can also just send the recording. It's on SoundCloud. So you have to have that, that application on your phone so you can listen to it. And mm -hmm. you can't download it. Sorry, it's not ready for prime time yet. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's yeah. all I got. Yeah, I always worry about where, where my recordings wind up, you know, in whose hands for what. And, and I'm like, oh, because some of them, you know, I, I prepped people that this is what this recording is for and this is what it's going to do and this is how i want you to approach it and it kind of doubles down on the the effect but it'll still help whoever's lap it winds up in but wouldn't it be great if they got hmm, the best you know possible results and and they knew oh it was carrie that what that weird that strange what is it carrie godmother i love it um yeah i'll hit her up and see how many more wishes she's got left in her in her wand <laughs> so anyway. oh, if you were here for last last week's and when you went through the form we have your name already you don't have to register oh, now yeah but the point of the matter is is you know y'all can do what you'd like to do we're going to pass out the we'll probably probably do the email for the recording later or early in the week next week yeah all right sweet and hi donna how show show us your show us your other hand all right let's i want you guys to all send healing vibes over there just positive healing stuff to donna's wrist honest to goodness just accept it donna just open comes, up and bring it on cast comes off tuesday i can't wait <laughs> yes yep i made it and then and then the healing then the real healing begins mm. unleashed <laughs> donna uncast it i love it Okay. Well, we're at an hour. Anybody got any last questions? Um, and otherwise, I'm going to send you all to go enjoy this beautiful day wherever you are. Be safe if you're in California. I'm in New Mexico where it's just sunny and beautiful. So anyway, anything, anybody? Um, and I'm going to save the chat here so I can go back and look at it later because I didn't get a chance to because um, I was busy. 
All right, cool. All right then. Um, love you all. See you. See you soon. And um, and I'll try to do a video that's a little bit more um, intense on the steps if, for the chattery mind thing. If somebody try what we did here, you'd be you will be surprised at the minimal amount of effort and the maximum amount of um, change that you get. It doesn't seem like it should be that way. And that's part of what holds us back is, well, it can't be that simple. It's got to be hard, right, Doug? It's got to be hard. Um, I've literally worked with people who've said, um, in, in, while they're in a relaxed state of hypnosis, you know, what's really holding you back? Well, I haven't, I haven't suffered enough. This hasn't been painful enough. I, I haven't done enough hard work yet. Really? <laughs> Like, how how much more hard work and pain is there? I mean, you can dig it up if you want to, or you can just say, you know what? I've probably done enough. It's probably time to move on to the next thing because there'll be challenges there too. It'll be okay. Ooh. Yeah. And we all do that. doesn't matter. You know, I'm with my hypnosis stuff and Doug will probably echo that back too. Those are the same fears and things that we ch we challenge ourselves with every single day. I know this is true. Can I believe it for me? I tell, I tell it to everybody else. Can I believe it for me? Huh, Doug? <laughs> so anyway, love you guys. I'm going to turn this off and um, we'll catch you guys later. Good luck, Donna. Keep us, keep us casted on your cast. <laughs> love you guys. Bye. There we go. Sorry, Doug. <sighs> there we go. There we go. There we go. All right.